Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Irish in the UK. Later in the show we'll be meeting John Duffy from County Mayo. But first, Sarah Mangan, the Consul General for Ireland and the North of England, recently laid a wreath at the Michael Davitt Memorial in Haslingdon. Michael Davitt's memory still lives on and is never forgotten with Angus Lindsay and the people of Haslingdon. While we were there, we also paid a visit to St Mary's Football Club, who has got very close ties with the Irish Democratic League Club in Haslingdon. So, of course, it's a very special day here. We saw you laying of the wreath there on Michael Davids Memorial. That's right. It's, uh, it's a lovely, it's a privilege to be here um, on behalf of the Irish government to lay the wreath for Michael Davitt. He was such an important patriot uh, of Ireland, member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Fenians. And, uh, and the fact that he is so important to Haslingdon and to this part of the world as well, where he grew up, really, and started his, uh, his political life here. He did, and of course he was very popular here in Haslingdon, and of course fondly remembered by a lot of the people, and we can see that here today, that his memorial has been kept in such good order. Absolutely, I mean, I think his life story is uh, still resonant, you know, it's, he was evicted uh, as a young boy with his family, and they walked, as I understand, having taken the boat, they walked from Liverpool to Haslingdon, found work in the mills here, and then of course Michael Davitt himself had the accident that uh, injured his arm as a young boy, I think he was 11 or 12, uh, and in a way that was uh, the saving of him because uh, he, as a result of that, was given the chance to have an education and of course became such an important um, political activist for Ireland, for the Land League, for uh, tenant farmers um, and was so important to our struggle for independence. And of course Angus Lindsay here and lots of other of the people have done so well to keep uh, Michael Davitt's memory alive. 
it's really impressive. I mean, this so many years on that uh, he's still remembered um, and his legacy is still celebrated here in Haslington. Angus and all the committee at the, uh, the Irish Democratic League Club here have done a wonderful job. Angus, of course, you've had many famous people here uh, to visit Michael Davis Memorial. And of course, it was great to see Sarah Mangan here from the consulate to lay the reed today. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. A privilege to have her here today. Yes. And of course, not too long ago, Mary McAleese, the president of Ireland, visited this memorial as well. She did visit the memorial. She didn't come to lay the wreath, but she came in honour of Michael Davitt, and we were very proud of that as well. I joined the club in the 1950s, knowing not a lot about Davitt, but over the years, I've just re just re found out what a tremendous person he was. And I'm only sorry, this was the site of his house here. He'd look across at the club there, and when he'd see that, that was a Conservative club when he lived here. And it was 1911 when um, the members are of, of the club, there was a smaller club on Marsden Square, and the members clubbed together and raised 1,200 pounds to buy that when the Conservative uh, club moved, and to raise 1,200 pounds in 1911 for the people must have been when you think that beer would be tuppence a threepence a pint. So you're looking at nearly 100 pints to a pound in those days, what 1,200 pounds must have been to have, to have raised that. And I'm just sorry that Michael would never know that the club would be an Irish club and in his name as well. The people of Haslington really took to him, didn't they? Oh, they did. I mean, as you know, um, he lost his arm in, a, in an accident. Um, and a, a, a local benefactor who was nothing, not Irish at all, paid for his education and things like that. And the people of Haslingen did, and they always has. I've said before, you ask for where the Irish club in Haslingen is, and somebody says, "Oh, you mean the Land League," which the club has always been called the Land League, really, more more than uh, more than the Irish club. There's so much history here, isn't there? Oh, the tremendous amount of history in Haslingen, and we have a. A great website, Haslingdon Old and New, that's uh, being done. There's all sorts of things on there that uh, the, the club doesn't produce that. And a gentleman called Brian York looks after that and he's done a tremendous job on that. And there's a lot, an awful lot about the Irish heritage on it as well as all sorts of other things. And of course, there's still quite a lot of Irish people around here. Oh, yes. Main, mainly now more Irish descent. But um, obviously, half the world is Irish descent, isn't it? But yeah. uh, there, there are still a lot of Irish, Irish people and Irish people of descent. And there's a wonderful museum in Strade and County Mayo, in County Mayo that uh, is really well, always well worth a visit if you're in the area. Well, they said that um, the club would be the custodian of Michael David, or Haslingham would be the custodian of Michael David's name. And I'm sure that, uh, that that is so. And they also arrange a special day, in uh, a golf day, in remembrance of Michael Davitt every September, I think. That's right, they do, and I, I look forward to maybe coming along to that as well, though I can't say I play golf, but uh, maybe I can rope some of the family into that. But it looks like a fantastic day as well, yeah, they, they do an awful lot. No, it's lovely, it's lovely to have the sun, isn't it? Yeah. Sarah, so you've done really well, you brought us the sunshine to Haslingdon, well done. I can't claim the sunshine now, but I'm delighted to be here on a sunny day. In 1887, Aslingdon St Mary's was formed, the football club, and the football club is still going today. They played in the Accrington League, the Blackburn League. Bit of success, not a lot of success, but we kept on going and going and, and going. We won one or two trophies, not many, but we've always had a gang of lads, players, always turned up, and uh, we've always put a game on. And you've had one or two uh, famous players here as well, didn't you? We have, we have. We've had... Uh, and Jerry Taggart, who turned out for us, and Matty Elliott. 50 caps for one and 30 caps for another, Ireland and Scotland. Michael, tell me a little bit about the teams you've got here. Uh, so at Junior Hoops, we have upwards of 25-ish, uh, maybe touching 30 teams now, with uh, children starting from as young as five-year-old, right the way up to uh, under-18s, where some of them progress onto the, uh, the adults team that we sort of feed into. We have uh, kids coming in at all different ages. I mean, some start at four or five, some come in at 10, 11, 12, even teenagers. Um, we're just an open club that just welcomes all. We have boys teams, girls teams, and girls playing within the boys teams. And uh, regardless of ability, age, we just accept everyone. It's great, keeps us busy, and uh, it's just something good for the little ones of the community to get involved with.
where we are, it's quite a, a, a good little area to be. So we have teams. Uh, it's basically on the the coaches choose which leagues we enter. So my personal team, which is under 12s, we're in the Bolton and Berry. You'll have some that might play in the East Lancashire League. You've some that might play go and play in Manchester leagues. Uh, so it's just all on what fits around the coaches who obviously the volunteer coaches who give up their time. So most of the kids play um, Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Play down here, sports centre. Generally come down in the afternoon and watch the, the adults playing. Uh, the club's run purely by volunteers. I think we've got around 30 volunteer coaches, people who do the admin. It's just a really great place to be. The sun's shining, kids are loving it. What more can you say? Age groups from five and six year old all the way up to under 16, 17, and then going to the, the Hasland and St Mary's first team or reserve team. I think late 70s, the proposed bypass that been going on for 50 years finally came through. So when the uh, they all came through, the football field went. So for eight or nine, ten years, we just played anywhere we could until with the government and the Salford Diocese. They came on and they sorted it all out and you can see what we've got today. I'll race it. Steady, steady, go. Go, 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 go. And some clubs still be like they'll close the door if you don't meet a certain criteria, a certain level, then they won't accept you. Whereas at junior hoops, it's just football for all. So, like I say, regardless of ability, that's I think that's how we managed to pull in, like I say, up to 400 children so far in just the three years that we've been going. If you're also involved with Manchester United, tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I've been quite fortunate for uh, I think four seasons now. I work with a little dot, six, seven, eight year olds. Uh, so I work for the uh, pre academy. So right the way up until they sign the contracts and go off on their little journey. Well, the little ones had a game this morning. The six, like I say, just starting out the sixes. It's just brilliant, headless chickens at time, but that's what they need to be at five, six year old. Uh, so they played a local team, Rose Grove, who came from Burnley. Uh, and then just, we've got some little games going on this afternoon as well, obviously making the most of the weather. Well, we do everything here. Weddings, funerals. We had a great St. Patrick's Day on Thursday down here. You've got some great volunteers here as well. That I know the bar stuff and everything around the club, but you've got a lot of volunteers to help out and keep it going. I think you call us Dad's Army. We have a couple of youngsters, but we have a, lo a load of old timers like myself. There's a few that I'd like to mention. That's that with Joe, Martin, Tommy, Fitzy. Johnny J, the girls behind the bear, absolutely unbelievable. If you get a chance to visit the Michael Davitt Memorial or the Irish Democratic League Club, there is so much history there to be seen. We also had a lovely time with St Mary's Football Club and what a great job they are doing for the community in that area with their underage and adult teams. Now we're off for a quick break and we'll see you very soon. that trip to Ireland yet? <laughs> Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. 
Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club, a friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now, I'm off to meet John Duffy, who hails from Kilmavie in County Mayo, and he immigrated to the UK when he was only 16 years of age. And he's got a great story to tell us, so I hope he's home. Hello, Hello Trisha. Martin. Lovely to see you. Great to see you. You're Thank you very welcome. much. I've come to see John. Oh, he's in there. Well, hello, John. Lovely to meet you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. John, you were born on the 3rd of July, 1929. Can you tell me, what was it like growing up in Ireland around about them times? And times were hard, but we were happy. And uh, well, I was born in a little thatched cottage, a big rockery around it. And I had, a, had a lovely childhood. It was ever so peaceful. There were no motorways, no aeroplanes, no nothing. And, uh, I used to love to stand outside the old cottage at night time and listen to the dogs barking and the rivers flowing. And it was a lo I had a lovely childhood. Yes. And I know you worked on the farm and worked for various people around the area before you emigrated to England. What was that like? Well, uh, it was it's, uh, hard going, but uh, hard work and not a lot for it. They gave you what they could and a bit to eat. We got a bit to eat. It was happy, but uh, that was it them times. And when you work for nothing, you won't go short of work. That was the only good thing about it. But. Uh, we, we survived, and, and everyone was the same. There was nobody any better off than another. Everybody was alike, you know. How did you feel when you had to leave home at the age of 16? I was delighted because there was no future for me. Once I was 12 years of age, I was looking at the map of England. I knew where, I would be, where I'd be going. And I was with my father, and I said, I'd, I was thinking of going to England. And he said to me, well, you're fit for any field, he said. And, uh, I went and got my passport then, went down, I had to go to the guards to get through the guards to get your passport. And so Friday was the day for pulling out, so uh, my father gave me a five pound note the day I was leaving and that'll get used to your destination. So he left me at the train, Balladrine, and the train I got from Balladrine, I had to go to Kilfree to get the Sligo train. And that train from Balladrine, well, you'd walk it fast, and 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 then and, uh, and, and this old boy that was this, it was loaded down with people. Friday was the day for pulling out, like, but it was loaded down. I thought it was the crowd that was on it was making it so slow, but 
all these comedians said to me, he said, well, he said, thank God it's not raining. He said, because the sneeze that passes out, like, but you had, everyone was happy. They, 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 they wanted money. That's all they thought about. You were leaving home for money. It wasn't, there was plenty of work, but nothing for it. There was, there was all, people say there was no work in Ireland. Was there no, they're asking you when you come here, was there no work in Ireland? There was plenty of work in Ireland from the day I can remember. But there was nothing for it, no. yeah. any, any amount of work, but mm, that was it. I've always said that, the day you track out of Ireland, you're on your own, it's up to yourself. There's two ways to go, the right way and the wrong way. And I was lucky I went the right way. Why did you come to Cambridge here? Did you have a contact there? Oh yes, I had a cousin there and uh, my brothers come at the same time there. There was one in Birmingham and I think the other fellow come from Leicester, but I met them on the farm when I got there, you know. And what was it like working in Cambridge here? Oh, it was hard graft. Uh, it was all peaceful. There was no such thing as everything you got, you, it was all, you had to work hard for it. And the lie down was very poor. And the cattle shed was the place, you went to the straw sack and filled the bags of straw and a few pallets and made your bed and that was it. Really. I had ten years rambling the country. There was, there was no road too long or no town too far from me. I'd, you'd pick up that paper and you'd see where there was there might be better work and you'd head for it, make a beeline for it and there'd be always men there before you like but you know, you had to put a bit of the gimp was that time they used to call it the gimp. You had to put a bit of a, yeah. a show on to to get the job like, you know. But, uh, that was that was the dim times. Yeah. But you you had you owned it for a few you there was no thing regular work. You know. There was no such thing as redundant spare dim times. It was hard going. <laughs> when you arrived in Manchester, you worked in Bradford Piss. Yes. Um that must have been really hard work. No, it was hard going. Uh, but that was the modern pit, that was compared with the other pits. There was bats and there was a canteen and it was the most modern pit, I would say, in the country. They spent about two million on it and, and next thing it closed down. Margaret Thatcher shut the lockdown. There was 2,000 men working in it at that time. Uh, it was hard to get the 53 bus. I, I lived in Russia and the 53 bus used to take me there and take me back. But uh, to get on that bus you stood up then, hanging off the bus station <laughs> to get to work. Now tell me about meeting Mary, your wife. Oh, I met her in the Savoy in, in uh, All Saints, a little dance hall there. Uh. Oh, I love dancing. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yeah, I love dancing, but my partner here didn't dance much <laughs> on it. Two left feet. He, he stood no chance when you went on the floor, was that it? You were far yeah. the better dancer. Well, I, I like dancing, that's yeah. why I used to go to the dance hall. And Mary, can you remember where you came from in Ireland? A village called Acres. And the little, the, a bigger village that had the shops and stores in it called Ahamore. All right. And then the town where they had the mill clothes in Ballyharness. Oh, yeah. That was in County Mayo. Mm -hmm. and then you had two lovely daughters. Tell me about them. Oh, they, they, they come along and anyway, but uh, they were born in Seymour Grove, which was right beside where I lived in Wally Range. There was yeah. this little hospital there and that, that's where they were born. Mm. Patricia, you must have some lovely memories of growing up with your mum and dad. Oh, I certainly had and with lots of cousins in Manchester and we all grew up together. Um, I'm still very close. Uh, we were at 52 first cousins, you know, between here and Ireland um, and lovely times. And then we'd look forward to in the summer, most of our friends at school with their Irish descent like ourselves. And we'd all be looking forward to heading off to Ireland for a few weeks. And the freedom you'd have there, you know, sliding down the hay shed and, you know, it was just so different and such memorable times and you'd come back Mum and Dad might be crying on the way because they were missing their parents and we'd be crying because we wanted to stay a bit longer. But it was lovely, lovely times, Martin. Of course, you've got uh, five grandchildren and I know, is it six great-grandchildren? Six, six great-grandchildren, yes. Uh, they come to see me regular. Uh. 
they d delight in them coming round to see them and it keeps them young as well. And it's just little things that the grandchildren, well, great-grandchildren will come out with about when mum loses a hearing aid and she needs new ears and, you know, just funny little statements they come out with. But, no, they're lovely, yeah, keep us all young. Now, I know that you are very heavily involved in the tug of war and I know that you had great success with that. Tell me about that and how you got involved in the tug of war and, and who you actually pulled for. Well, it's one of the oldest, tug of war is one of the oldest sports there is. It's going from day one, I would safely say, and it was never a city. Police that, and farmers, farmers were hell bent on it, like, you know. Everywhere you went, there'd be farmers, and uh, it, it was. You had to be dedicated. You to, it depends how hard you train. But there was a lot of men tried it, but they, they weren't able for it. You know, I always looked after myself. I saw hungers at many a time in Lincolnshire. And we used to have to catch our own fish. And, uh, I couldn't bear fish when I first come to the country, but the Bell Mullet men got me in on it, and uh, we had a range in the old shant where we were. And, They'd get two enamel plates and put their fish in it every morning and a bit of onion with it. And when you'd come in at dinner time, wouldn't you enjoy that? And there'd be maybe a couple of pounds of fish for <laughs> each man, but uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. And do you still keep in contact with your relatives in Ireland? Oh, we do, Martin, yeah. We, and they, some of them have moved to London and they come up to see us as well. And we visit them and back and forth to Ireland as well. And it's nice for the next generation as well because they're, they're cousins and they keep in touch as well. And Facebook, of course, is great because you're, everyone is in touch and knows what's happening. We often say how lucky we are to have them. Mum will be 89 now next week and as you know, dad, dad's coming 93. And I, myself, out of all my friends, I'm the only one that's still got both the parents yeah, and we diamonds. treasure that. Yeah. We are very, very lucky. We count our blessings every morning, Martin, because we're very fortunate to have the two of them. There are diamonds and we look after them, yeah. If I had my life to live over again, I'd do the same thing again and marry the same woman. Someday I'll go back again to my old home in the West where Atlantic waters cradle place that I love best and the girl from lovely Westport is a memory now I guess but the air indeed beside me doesn't make the hurting less a heart so full of memories can never be at rest I recall the girl I knew long long ago late at night when all is still and the moon peeps o'er the hill about my old home in Mayo. I dream about my old home in Mayo. Well, it's been lovely to meet John and all his beautiful family here today, and we hope you've enjoyed his story at home. Don't forget, Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening with his show from County Mayo, and we are here, as usual, at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. So from myself and all of John Duffy's lovely family, Take care and we'll see you soon.